propellers are dull, unimaginative, and boring. They don't have complicated parts like an engine. There's nothing to take apart. No pieces to puzzle over. At first glance, there's nothing to consider when examining a propeller. You need one on the ship. You spin it, and the ship goes forward. Simple. A propeller is like an old shoe. It's dependable, and you just slip it on and start moving. Ever try walking in a shoe that doesn't fit you? Very quickly, your foot starts to hurt, or the shoe wears down, and you need to buy a new one. Propellers are the same way. More important than anything else, you need to fit the right propeller to your vessel. Otherwise, you get foot pains. So what do these foot pains look like on a ship? Well, increased fuel consumption for one, and even destruction of the propeller. The first sign of a bad propeller fit is increased fuel consumption. Now, your average propeller is around 65% efficient, which is pretty darn good. Let's compare that against the cost of bunker fuel. Now, at the time of this video, bunker fuel sold for around 480 US dollars per metric ton, and that's world average. Now, except not all of that fuel actually works at pushing your vessel forward. We really only care about the cost that we pay to push the boat forward. So first, you have a loss of 50 to 60% engine efficiency, which converts that chemical energy of your fuel into a spinning shaft. Now it's just a spinning shaft. Now this first conversion brings your price up to around $960 per metric ton of effective fuel, the fuel that's actually doing good for you. Now the rest is just generating wasted heat which you may be able to recover somewhat. You think that's bad though? Then the propeller converts that spinning shaft into a pushing force. A poorly fitted propeller can go as low as 35% efficiency. Now your bunker price skyrockets up to $2,743 per metric ton of effective fuel. Yes, I said 2,700 huge. Compare that to a good propeller fit. We'll say 65% efficiency. That's only $1,477 $1, per metric ton of effective fuel. So again, we're talking the price we pay for the fuel that actually helps us. Now, a poor, poorly fitted propeller can increase your fuel price by as much as 263%. Imagine justifying that to your boss. Go ahead, say that. Hey boss, prices just went up by 263%. Do you know what the answer will be? Hey Jim, you just lost your job. Bad propeller fits cost real money. The second symptom of a bad propeller design is cavitation. That's going to lead to actual destruction of the propeller. You're going to break blades. Now, bad propeller design shows up as small, isolated regions of cavitation. For example, cavitation at the root of the propeller. You'll see little pits. It looks like almost corrosion, but it's actually due to cavitation. Something about the propeller shape concentrated water flow at that root and created cavitation. Now, if you see evidence of local cavitation like this, get a new propeller design. The current design is going to bring you nothing but heartache. Although, not all cavitation means bad propellers. More commonly, we see cavitation from an overloaded propeller. We're getting back to the issue of propeller fit. This is especially a problem with high-speed vessels or high-speed propellers. Now, one overloaded, the entire blade hovers on the edge of creating the cavitation air bubbles. Now, to get the best performance out of our propeller, we try to get very close to that per cavitation limit. We may even go so far as to create a little bit of cavitation on part of the propeller blade normally towards the edges. This is fairly common and not a huge concern. You can, of course, decide that you don't want cavitation on your propeller. That's a contract issue. But too much of that cavitation is an issue. It can destroy your propeller. Just like a shoe, your propeller is going to be with you for a very long time. A mistake with the propeller design will continue to hurt you 
for the rest of the life of the ship. It creates higher fuel consumption, higher bunkering bills, uncertain job prospects, and for the really unfortunate, a bad design can even break the propeller due to cavitation damage. Now, even though a propeller may not be the sexiest machine on the ship, it is one of the most critical. Propeller design matters a great deal, and you should definitely invest in learning more about it. Thanks very much. I'm Nick, the Naval Architect. Yes, we have reached the part of the show where I ask for tips. So please, hand me your tips. In this case, I just need you to click that little subscribe button. Subscribe.